September 8th was a day that uh, we lost a good friend here. Now, let me, let me give you a little history. Uh, Mylon Lefevre uh, was, a, was not just a minister, as you see if you watch the Victory Channel. He was my friend. He was my big brother. He was a big brother to a lot of us. Uh, I remember Mylon when he came out of the rock and roll world and couldn't really, had a difficult time putting a sentence together because of all the drugs in his system. He was a living example of what God does with a life that's given to him. Uh, I'm going to go to John Cooper. John, uh, you and I have talked several times about our friendship with Mylon and things he would say. And John, in fact, the reason you're on the show is because Mylon would say, Gene, you need to get John Cooper on. He's a good dude. You know, uh, <laughs> you know. what did Mylon, I just want to reflect a little bit on our friend Mylon LeFevre. I mean, Mylon was such a rock star. I mean, everything he said was profound and funny at the same time. And, and that's a pretty hard combination. I mean, Mylon was just, he was larger than life. And for one thing, he's a big man. He's six, three. well, actually, Gene, you're a big man too. You're about six, three, probably. He was just such a force. And when I met him only a handful of years ago, maybe six years ago, I think, I just knew that God was bringing him into my life. And uh, so he contacted me, long story short, I had written something that he liked. And I, I think he was praying for me. And he felt that God told him that I was one of his, in my language, his assignments. That's one of Violin's words. He said, God gave me an assignment and you're one of my assignments. And he would encourage me and he, and he would speak the word of God to me. And one of the things he, he would always say to me is about being courageous, being a man who is willing to stand up for truth, no matter the cost. And I think I could relate to him because he was a rocker. He was a rebel. I mean, he is a revolutionary for Jesus. And he's one of those people that would speak the truth and maybe sometimes even set things on fire, but he didn't even know he was setting things on fire. He was just saying what was true. And he used to say to me, son, that that's what happens when you speak for Jesus. You, you're making the devil mad. You're making you people mad. You don't mean to make people mad. You're, you're trying to love them, but you got to tell them the truth. And uh, I, I, I just, I, he was such an impactful force in my life. I want people to remember Mylon. I want people to know about what yeah. a rock hero yeah. he was and a Jesus freak. He was indeed. You know, Pastor Hank, you you knew Mylon a little bit later. You got to know a little bit later. Uh, you got to actually. You were one of the last one of the last few people that had dinner with Mylon. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. Well, first of all, I want to just say Mylon was a dude, man. And there are few dudes, but he was the real dude. And he was a great friend, but he was also someone that I looked up to and I received a lot of wisdom. We would spend, uh, you know, hours on the phone together. And uh, I want to just back up before I answer your question or make a comment. You know, I first heard of uh, Mylon back with uh, Broken Heart, and he was here in Omaha, Nebraska at a concert. Get this, Pastor Gene. So I'm at this conference in the, the conference in the late late 80s that he was singing at. And uh, I, I, I didn't realize that my wife was there. And uh, we didn't even know each other. And I'm sitting in the second row. And I look up at Mylon, and I, I had just gotten saved. And I said, God, I want to meet this man. Well, we became great friends. Fast forward to uh, just about a month ago, uh, we actually, Brenda and I went to his house for a wonderful dinner. He uh, had steak for us. And I kept telling him, he kept saying, how do you like the steak? I said, Mylon, this is not a Texas steak. This is imported from Omaha. And he just laughed and laughed and laughed. But I'm going to tell you something that he said to me. And I'll never forget it. It was kind of, you know, one of the most touching times, Pastor Gene. He, I was in his office and uh, we prayed together and he said, Hank, stand up for just a moment. And we stood up and he stood up and he looked at me and he said, I want you to know something. God needs you and God needs this country. God needs Pastor Gene and God needs Flashpoint and Flashpoint Army. And it is the key for a divine turnaround. And I tell you, I felt the spirit of God come so strong. And then the Lord spoke to him and said, Milam, you are going to see something happen in the next few days that you've not had happen in your physical body. You're going to sit on the edge of your bed and you're going to feel a pop in your ankles and it's going to go up through your knees. And this will be a sign that God says he is pleased 
agrees with you and that he is standing with you and for you. And I'm telling you, he fought the fight of faith. I haven't met anybody quite like Mylon. You never heard anything negative, negative come out of his mouth. And I remember he wanted to get a picture. He insisted on getting a picture before we left. And he said these words to me, and I'll never forget it. He said, Hank, I love you and I will see you soon. And so Mylon, I will, but I want to show you this. He gave me this book. He had been reading this book. This is by Dr. Oral Roberts, one of the first books that Dr. Oral Roberts ever wrote. And it's called What to Do, Things You Need to Do When You Need Healing, Do These Things. And Mylon read these things every day. And this was the book that he was reading. He said, I want to give this to you. I want to bless you. So, you know, Mylon, that was him. He was always given to others. He was a soul winner, but he was a dude. And uh, I thank God for his life and the investment that he had in my life. Well, let me tell you something, Hank, you didn't know. Uh, mm. I, w I think I was with you one of the first times he came to your church and uh, yeah. we went to lunch and he had some several conversations and he calls me one day and he goes, Gene, I need to talk to you about <laughs> Hank Kuhneman. <clears throat> and I said, yeah, he's a, he's a wild guy, isn't he? I said, what do you mean? He's, <laughs> he's like a big kid. He's like a big kid, uh, but he's got a strong ministry. And I'm like, yeah, he is. You know, I mean, nobody put it quite like Mylon did, you know, and he loved you and he loved John. Yeah. And, and I just love what he said. Uh, you know, he was always uplifting to me, even when yeah. I wanted him to get mad with me about something I didn't like. He said, well, look at what they did to Jesus. And all he did was love people, you know, and I'm <laughs> like, that's good. Mylon, you're you not helping. Do a, you yeah. do a great imitation. Yeah. That, that was really good. Well, Pastor we're both, we're Georgia both from accent. Georgia. Yeah, we're both from Georgia and I can yeah. turn it on at a time when I need to. Yeah. All right. So, that's really <laughs> so let me hey, play. I got to say this, Pastor Go Gene, ahead. wait, before you do that, you remember the famous thing that Mylon would do with the rock and I can't even do it. I, you can, I have no rhythm. I have CRD, Caucasian rhythm deficiency, but we did that together in his office. I begged him. I said, I know it's been years. And we did that together in his office. It was so cool. So I hope that looked like what he used to do. Or, but you remember that? You remember that famous yeah. movie he did? I, I'm watching John's John Cooper. Like, I don't know what that uh, yeah, movie is. Yeah, uh, it's just <laughs> okay. kind of like he's smiling and nodding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, never John, mind. did you do it? Did you learn any moves from uh, Mylon? Well, I learned a bunch of good sayings from Mylon. Um, I, I just thought of one. You may have heard this, but um, let's see it. I felt the Lord leading me to write a book a few years ago, and uh, I, I did not feel qualified to write a book. I'm a singer. I'm not a theologian and this and the other, and I was struggling with it. And I told my wife, I said, I feel like an idiot writing this book. I just don't think this is, I don't think this is for me. God can't use somebody like me to write this. That very day, I get a phone call from Mylon. I was in Germany touring. And I get a phone call from Mylon, and he says, he said, son, I've been praying for you today, and I felt the Lord lead, lead me to call you and say, how's that book coming along? You're supposed to write that book. And I said, man, I am i don't feel like I'm qualified to write this. That's right. I don't. And he said, son, it's uh, God doesn't call you to do something based on your capabilities. And he says, it's when you know that you're weak that he's going to show himself strong. And then he said this, this is what I learned from Mylon. He says, uh, God wants to add his super to your natural. <laughs> is that a Mylonism or what? That is good. God yep. wants to add yeah, his super good. to wow. your naturals. Amen. I've got 30 things like that I remember from Mylon. He just, <laughs> he would always say, he'd say, okay, yeah. son, now go out there and get after it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he'd say, well, he was a big fan of Flashpoint, and I have a few pictures. Mm -hmm. And anytime we came out with a new T-shirt or a new hat, mm -hmm. uh, Mylon had to get it. So I always made sure there's a picture of him and Christy and with his Flashpoint, you know, he, uh, I, I made sure everybody knew that he was a, a big fan of Flashpoint. He would call Tell me what I thought. Yeah. He says, man, I don't know how you do that, Gene. Me wrangling cats every time you're on the show. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the things you didn't you didn't know Mylon very long to know he was uh, he loved the fact of winning souls. He loved winning souls and what he did. I, uh, over 250,000 souls were accredited when he was touring. Wow. Young people uh, that won, but we found a clip and I want to play it for you. And there's at the very end of this clip really sums up who Mylon Lefebvre is. Watch. Mm. The Crank the Sky album is basically a rock worship album. I mean, we didn't intentionally write it that way. We just went to fasting and praying, and God gave us, 
you know, the Bible says he has a still, small voice, and if you'll be quiet, you can hear him. We went into prayer. He gave us these songs. We realized after we'd recorded it that it was basically a worship. We had written it to God instead of to the people, but that's okay. You know, it is just that's who we were uh, needing to communicate with at the time. Crack the Sky is a prayer. The song itself is a desire for the return of Christ, and it's just saying, Lord, you know my heart. You know what's going on. I'm not unhappy on the planet, and I'm thankful for what you're doing, but I want you to come on and crack the sky. That's what he says. He says, nobody knows when, the day or anything, but it says on the day he returns, it'll be like lightning flashing across the sky. Just going to crack it open in the east. He's coming back with all the armies of heaven this time. It's going to be, I'm looking forward to it. I really I, I want to be with God. I really want to be with God. Mine and Lefevre, what an a legend? Yes, he was a legend. You know, when I look at that video, John, I never would have thought I would see that Mylon Lefevre on church platforms around the country, around the world, really, preaching and teaching the Bible and quoting scripture like he. There's, there's hope for all of us, isn't there, John? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Ain't that a good thing, man? Yeah, Mylon, Mylon would like to mix it up. I mean, he's an enigma. You, you, you. You couldn't put him in a box. You absolutely couldn't put him in a box. I never met somebody that quoted scripture more than Milan. And he quotes long scripture. He didn't quote one verse. He quotes a whole thing. And then he moves on to the next scripture. And uh, I'll just say this. The, the very last thing that I, I texted Milan, I texted him about four days ago, five days ago, I was reading a book called The Prophets. And it reminded me of Milan. And I sent it to him. I sent him a, a, a little text from it. And I said, Man, this reminds me of Mylon, and uh, this is the last thing he texted to me. He said, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Amen to that. Amen to that. Wow. Final thoughts wow. there, Pastor Hank, on, on Mylon Lefebvre? Well, just what John was saying, you know, Mylon was a prophetic voice into my life, and I'm going to miss that greatly. He was very, very accurate. But also what I loved about Mylon is he was always an encourager. And I want to just encourage you that are watching, be that to somebody right now in these hard times. Be an encourager. Continue to speak the word. I never, not one time. Did I ever hear negativity or unbelief come out of Mylon's mouth? And that's exactly how I'm going to be. And I want to encourage you to do the same because that is the fight of faith. And that's how we succeed in life. And so, Mylon, I love you. I miss you. And uh, we are here to stand with Christy, though. And I thank God for his life and his investment in my life as well. Amen. Last several years, we had regular dinner dates, Terry and I did with Mylon mm -hmm. and Christy and go eat uh, good food, good Italian food, and share the <laughs> word and talk about, usually it was me complaining about something and Mylon telling me it's not a big deal. Uh, but he's a great, <laughs> he's a great friend. I'm going to miss my yeah, friend, uh, but we're supporting, like you said, we stand with Christy in prayers. But Amen. you know, there's a lot of people, John, that right now that are looking at this and they're going, man, you guys really love that guy. We do. And, but there's, there's a call, and I was thinking about Milan today, and here's, here's the thing that we need to be. You know, who are you being a mentor to in your life? Who, who are you standing up for and calling, picking up the phone and calling without being asked first to say an encouraging word? John, that's the lesson for us, that we need to do that. We need to carry not just his legacy on in that way, but this is scripturally what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be encouraging to each other. Yeah. Amen. You know, Gene, that is such a powerful, powerful word because I wasn't even thinking that, but that's exactly how my relationship with Mylon started. He just said, hey, if you need me, I'm here. He, he used to say this to me all the time. He'd say, I want to submit something to you. And what he meant was he's been praying and he wants to encourage you with something that he thinks might be able to change your life, but he doesn't want to push it on you. So he'd say, let me submit this to you. And then he'd say, I'm not your teacher. The Holy Spirit's your teacher, but let me submit it. And then he would lovingly say something to me that I really needed to hear. And he just took the time. He'd say, anytime you need me, I'm here. So he made that move. That's right. And we need to be raising up a younger generation Amen. in Christ because it's Amen. a narcissistic world right now. And we say, it. I'm willing to give my time to you. I'm not trying to force you to do yeah. something, but Amen. I'm trying to be as loving to you as Christ has been to me. Tell me what you need, brother. That's so good. Pastor Hank, Amen. I know you, you agree with that and, and raising up others and being that mentor. Uh, I want to get your, your final opinions on that. 
Well, like Mylan said, Flashpoint Army, we need you. America needs you. And then he said these words. He said, we are going to get America back. And I tell you, those words ring true, and we're going to see it happen, just as Mylan said.